don't want to mention that. That's my last name, and that's not going to work. Yes, I was her principal, and then she got her master's and moved up to the ladder and was my boss in central office. Go figure. Only in education you can do that. I'm going to go real fast through my career. I was going to tell you all that. I've counted them up. I've been 11, 12 different careers. And then if you have a question, you can ask me about any one of them. They're all different. I, was, I grew up on a horse farm. We raised quarter horses, and I showed quarter horses. And in high school, I started teaching lessons. That was my first one. I taught people how to ride, and we did that on into college. I did not want a job in a building. I did not want to sit behind a desk. I did not like to conform to rules. I don't like to go by what you're supposed to do. So I wanted a job that was outside, and I was going to do horses or art. That was my two loves. And I went to Kilgore College and got a two-year art degree, commercial art degree. At the time, it was what he was talking about, graphic design, album covers, logos, things like that. Some of my classmates got jobs while they were in school. They, I know one now that works for Holiday Inn, designing their uh, all artwork and stuff on their walls. So that's kind of cool. Um, after that, I went to work for a lady at the design factory that did all of the wooden carved signs in Jefferson. I don't know if y'all been to Jefferson, but all of their buildings have those really old carved signs and stuff. We designed and did those. Um, then I went to work at Poser Business Forms. That was a real job because I had to go interview and then they hired me and I went in the pre-press department. I had a desk, a light table and the T-square and all that stuff. And I really got to use my art that I love so much and did that for three years. And then the fourth year they hired me for the lead person. And I was the youngest one ever in the history of the company, 21 years old to be lead of pre-press. So you can do whatever you want to do. You, know? <laughs> you can set your mind to it and do it. Um, right in there, I decided to get married and had two boys right back to back, 14 months apart, so I was a mom. I count that as a career, because that one's ongoing and it will never leave. Mine are 33 and 34 now, and I'm still mom, still in that career. After that, I went back to school. I said, okay, I love this art thing so much, I wanna affect other people, so I wanna go back and get my teaching degree. Maybe I can teach art somewhere and affect myself like my fifth grade teacher did for me. And they don't have an art degree around here anymore, so I got elementary education, went into the classroom, taught there, taught art at Harleton Elementary for two years and then became a principal and that's where Angel came in. And we got her in the classroom and worked a lot of things together. Um, did that until 2016 and then I retired to take care of my mom. I didn't put caregiver on my list, so that makes 13. Um, my mom is older, she smoked for 40 years so she can't breathe, she's on oxygen and I have to go over and take care of her and take her meals and stuff and um, do that. But I still get to use my art, so I started going back to what I used to do off and on, and that's do weddings and design weddings and design decor and all that kind of stuff for parties and everything in the world. And as of the last few months, I'm an independent designer for chalk couture, so I get to bake things with stencils. Angel and I do that a lot together, too, and do it on uh, projects and sell them and do that. So a whole bunch of different things. And I want to tell you two things. And you don't have to think about anything else about a career. Some of y'all looking at careers, you don't give a hang about it right now. But two things you need to think about. Your interaction and your relationships with people. That and what you love to do. And those two things go out into the world. And it might be college. It might be a trade school. It might be going to work and those people will train you. There's all kinds of options now. And everybody doesn't have to do that fast track to college. And I know I'm an educator. And both of my boys went to college, but one of them has a master's in history and could not survive teaching junior high English. I mean, junior college English. Could not. So find, find your niche. Find your thing. Go for it. Do it. So I talked about a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of different things in there. I want to go back and tell you one cool thing that I got to do way back when I was doing the horse thing. I showed a horse for Terry Bradshaw. Do y'all know who he is? The commentator on TV for football? Mm -hmm. Big football quarterback for the Steelers? Yes, he is a very big man in real life. He is bigger than that door. But he had horses. And because we had horses, we got connected through the people, not any school or anything else. And I got to show a horse for them. So it was kind of fun. I got to do that. We have some of the state championship team in here. Oh, get out. Mm -hmm. Why cool. do y'all not have your rings on? Are they so big? No, they're just... Just keeping it put up. Yeah, don't place in public. <laughs> it's, in, it's in the safety deposit box. Mm -hmm. I hope it's safe. That's, that's my life. And right now, I'm on another career. I'm doing other things, and I just keep going. 
So keep keep relationships going. Do what's true to your heart, and just never stop learning. I'm not hear that cliche. Never stop learning. Well, it's true. If you if you're always interested in stuff, you'll find a different avenue to go. Um, I went real fast. If you have a question about any of the thirteen <coughs> things, I would rather hear from you what you want to know. I, I'm not a lecture person. I see a hand. Go ahead. Start us off. So, like, what's the hardest thing that you had to do with like a principal that you worked through that you can never like let go? I mean, like, not take your eyes off. The hardest thing for me personally as a principal is I had to go by all these rules and I had to be in a box and I had to make the teachers do things like that stupid test and all of these things that I thought were ridiculous because I I tend to think outside the box. All this stuff on the door right here is really interesting to me because that is outside on the wall. It's creativity and it's from how you were thinking and I would much rather have students think than work on a test. I'm, the, I'm not the component for the test. So it was very hard for me to be a principal and make these guys in question, yes, you have to do that. I'm sorry, you have to do that. But in the meantime, when you got five minutes over here, let them be creative and let's go out of boxes, go outside and do some stuff. I hated that. Because I don't, I don't, I don't like rules. It's just a basic problem of mine. I have ADD and I don't like rules, so I didn't fit in that box very good. But I did get to spread some art and some do some stuff like that, which I wanted to. So you were a fun principal. Um, I don't know if fun was it. I just wanted to be real. When I would, I was telling my husband last night, I was talking about this. What am I going to tell these people? They're not interested in anything I did. They're on, they're on their own track. I said, but when I would go to uh, principal conferences, you know, everybody kind of looks all the same. They all have these suits on, this double knit, and their hair's all the same way, and all the same jewelry. Well, I didn't look like that. I wore jeans. This is what I wore. And I would go up to something, and they'd say, oh, what do you teach? And I'd say, well, I'm a principal. Because I didn't look like one. And I guess I didn't act like one, because to me, that was in a box. And I thought, be real. You need to be real. You need to get in here with these kids and do yeah. things that they wanted to do. I mean, that's just my philosophy. So... When we would go to principal meetings and we'd all sit in our roundtable discussions, I was the odd man out and they would be very scared to ask me a question because I wouldn't go along with it. I'd say, we got better ideas. These kids have better ideas. They need to be having technology outside, doing stuff and instead of writing about it in a book or studying about it and answering a little box question. So yeah, I guess I was because I just don't think you need to be stuck in a desk. I didn't have desks like this in my classroom. I'm shocked that y'all sat this long. Aren't you just about numb down there? Yeah. Don't see it. So get up and move. We, we get up and just walk around. I don't know how you sit that long. I can't see it. I don't do the sitting thing either. So, so tell us about, I know um, your, very, your current position that you're trying to get out of, <laughs> that you're for Walker's Mill. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention that one. I'm the event coordinator for Walker's Mill Winery in Hallsville. I don't know if y'all know where that is. Brand new barn, Dr. Strahan built out there next to his house. And he needed somebody to take care of all the events and everything. Well, last year we had about eight or ten weddings and receptions. And this year we're booked solid all the way through till June. So I, it's it's running. And I said, I don't want to do that. That puts me back on the calendar and in a box. And I don't, I don't want to be that tied down. So I have about six weddings that I'm working on for them and doing that. But um, that really is a neat position. And there's a girl that just applied from or somewhere that has um, <laughs> what is the not communication hospitality she has some kind of degree marketing marketing and something else and so she she'll do more than just events she'll do the advertising and the all the stuff for the bar because it's a, it's a fair, relatively new place and it's gone it's fixing to take off and go crazy and I said somebody with some more energy needs to do that I don't want to do that I don't work that hard because mm -hmm. winter events usually held. Uh, a lot on the weekend. Used to be spring people, but now it's fall too. October, yeah. September. But on weekends, and that might be when you want to, your boys are off work and you want to spend time with them. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be so, tied to that calendar, so I'm backing back out of that and going to different things. Tell them about uh, your rental, your, um, where Miss Wendy, like, if you want to have a, like I call her, I'm like, hey, I'm going to have a fiesta shower at my house. Thing, like a themed shower for a couple Party. that's getting married. And I'm going to do like a Mexican spread. So I want fiesta decorations. She's got tubs of fiesta decorations that you can rent from her, okay? Uh, if you want to throw a... Luau. 
luau, yeah, like for graduation party. Then she has all of her tubs of luau decorations that you can rent and take them home, set up your party, return them back to her. People can't see it. They can't see how to put all that together. I know you go on Pinterest, which is great. I had to ground myself on Pinterest. I'd be up two, three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, I gotta go back <laughs> somewhere else. And that's great. They, they show it to you, but they don't show you how to put it together. So I kind of took Pinterest and then started collecting and got storage building. So that's an offshoot from one of these other careers, I guess. I didn't notice it. Just happen. So, do y'all notice a theme running through her careers? Yeah, she likes to be the boss. Okay. <clears throat> I like. I like she to be well, in control likes, of her. Yeah. She's self-employed. Yeah. I like to be. I live in Las Vegas. I hear that. Okay. What when she got her first degree in graphic design? Mm -hmm. What field is that in? I'm a mark. Art. Arts. Okay, I think that's a running theme yeah. through all of her careers. That's her true, I think, love. Like, mm -hmm. tomorrow night we're going to get together for fun. What does she want to do? Draw. She wants, or yeah, us to chalk. paint, okay, to do this chalking thing. So that's her true love, and I think it's neat that she's turned that into so many. I would get away from it, but I keep coming back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would go out here and do school and do in the business and be in the classroom and go in and out, age five, and then I come back. If I say, if I ever did something like that, I never say more than six or seven years. I, I will tell my thing. I change jobs about every. I get a seven-year itch. I guess I got to do something else, and that's okay. That's yes. You know, you, your okay. parents and grandparents probably stayed at one job and got a watch when they were there, 25, 30 years, and retired. And you don't want to do that. And I don't know anybody does anymore because you kind of change interest. Jobs are changing. You that's know. Okay. Yep. So. Just like college, just like with a job, it's not a marriage. It's not a lifetime commitment. Try it, see if you like it. See what you don't like about it. That way the next job you get or the next uh, program you go into or training you go into, you know, hey, I don't want any part of that, okay? Miss Wendy doesn't like to be in a office <laughs> tell, being told what to do eight to five. That is not her. You know, there are people who would like to sit at a cubicle all day and never see human. I have a son like that, oddly enough. I have a son that's very structured, very OCD, very give me a list, give me the times you want it done. I'll and turn me loose, I'll go do it, but I need to know the I need to know the whole picture before I start. And he and I go round and round because I just want to dive in. I got the ideas right here. I see it. Let's go. He's got to have all the details. Y'all are not, some of y'all are that way. And and you have to know that. Because if you're in a job that's not like that, you're going to be very frustrated. Very frustrated and very unhappy. So he is. He's very, I don't know where he got it. I don't know whose kid he is. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> that's not true. His, he got it from his daddy. His daddy's that way. But he is very, and the other one's like me. He and I get along great. Okay. He just called when I was outside the door. He is into construction. And he cuts. They were cutting sink holes out of something. And he brought me some one time. And I said, oh, I'd make something out of those. So he just called. He said, I got 18 of these. You want them? I said, yes. So he and I, you know, same, same mm -hmm. way. <laughs> yeah. Not the first one. I can see that. You, All right. you had a question a while ago. Yes. When she yeah. Started. I was going to ask, what, what do, you, do you know what like, the network is? My like, network? Like your, your oh, I don't have any network. <laughs> you don't? No, I didn't do this for money, unfortunately. I, I'm, I work for, no. No, I don't have any. I will tell you that I'm married to a man that was in oil and gas, mm -hmm. and his family's company did real well in the 70s and 80s and the first part of the 90s, and the bottom fell out, and they are struggling dearly. We, we are struggling on that end. I have I retired from school, and I have income, but I, I don't have a net worth. <laughs> I have a house. I have 30 acres. I have my stuff and two kids. That's, that's, I didn't... And I know money's real important, but I, I couldn't focus on that because when I did, I was very unhappy. I did that. I did that for 20 years, and that was not me. That's me. Didn't work for me. So. But you did what you had to do at some points in your life to help get your children raised. I, yeah, I did it. I played the game bills so that I could paid. pay for school. And both mine have college degrees, so it's paid for. But no, I don't have any extra. <laughs> There's no net worth. All right, other questions? So like, if I paid you, could you make me an album art? I could. 
he could. He's coming in to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Albums are coming back. I see, I watch Jimmy Fallon all the time at night because I'm a night owl and I stay up till James Corbin, all of them. And the whole 33 size album, he keeps holding that up. So evidently that's back in. Can you buy them that big? With the, 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 the CD yeah. and the vinyls? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like for new like songs? Vinyls. Yeah, there's like yeah. new stuff. Really? I don't know if y'all call those vinyls. That's What's cool. What's the vinyls called? So you know, like thing where you like, it's a big old black disc, yeah. put it down, like the record. grab this. I know what you're talking, I know what it is. <laughs> you just I have never heard it called vinyls. See, my husband's a musician, so we went all through that. What? Everything from vinyls, actually he had eight track tapes, to vinyls, to C cassettes, to CDs, to, yeah, we have a. Does he still have some? Yes. And a room where he records and does it. So, so that's his art thing. He makes music? What, he what, does what at home. He does it professionally. What does he, like, what is the type of music he makes? All kinds. Doesn't he, he play guitar? <laughs> He plays everything we have. Okay. We have a music room that has about like 30 or 40 different instruments and plays them all. So can I get your number after this so I can talk to him? <laughs> oh my, my son plays more than he does. You probably need him. Okay. Either one of them. But honestly, like guitar and vocals. Yeah, it like, does smack. Yeah. 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 Yeah
No one, most people don't get off two weeks at Christmas. Most people don't get a spring break and a Thanksgiving break and a three month summer with your kids. You have to find somewhere, you know, for them to be. So, um, it was very difficult in the beginning of teaching when I was a single mom to, um, be the head of household and make enough money to take care of both of us, you know, to pay a house note on my own and a car note and those things. But as far as being a supplemental income and being a mom, those are really good hours. You know, Miss Wendy got to be there with her boys um, in school, and so did I. Gunner pre K through graduation. Every year, of Gun I mean, every day of Gunner's junior year, he ate lunch with me in my office. You know, who else gets, what other mom gets to do that? Miss Tamara. So, okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> someone who works here, you know? So, those, there are perks, you know, to education, but then. The part like Miss Wendy and I both did was, you know, trying to move up the ladder to where if you're going to be there, you're going to make better money. Then really, I feel like it took us away from the thing that we love the most, which were the kids. And you, I think I really like kids better than adults. I do too. Because adults want to put me in a box. They want me to be my schedule. I don't want to be on a schedule. But I did get to do my boys when they moved on up. I was elementary. But because I was a principal when they were in a, a sports event, or my guys, because we were in a little bit of school, got to do everything. We were in one act play, we were in football, we were in band, we were in uh, for, uh, FFA, shooting sports, everything. I mean, they got to do it. So when they went to something, I got to go see it, which was awesome. So that was worth it. Very worth the job. Yeah, you got to weigh all that out. What's it going to take you away from? What's it going to encourage? When did you um discover that you don't like b being put in a box, like that you don't like rules and stuff? Probably in the first grade, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I got in trouble at recess and had to go to the principal. We were standing in line to go in, and some boy over here next to me said something. I called him some name and got in trouble and went to the office and went and sitting in there with him talking to me. And saying, saying what I was going to do, I realized I think this is ridiculous. I don't need to be in here. And I kind of had a rebellious attitude, I would say, as a kid. I was probably not a good student you wanted to have in your class because I always asked why. And I always said, that's stupid, because it was. He was doing it just because it was on the lesson plan. And they did it last year, but it meant nothing. And I questioned everything, so I kind of was that kid going through school that, oh, God, she's going to be in here. She's going to wear me out. Because I asked why. So you, you're you like a very curious person. Uh-huh. It's not that you were but, like. But tell me why. I will do what you want me to do if there's a valid reason. If, if there's something I'm going to get out of it, or it makes sense, or it's going to help the bigger purpose, yeah, I'll do it. But if we're doing it just because you need all of us working over here on this and turning in these 14 lesson plans to get grades, it's not going to happen. Thank you. <laughs> it's not going to happen in my book. I got my son in trouble in junior high. In junior high, we had one teacher at this school that made them take out junior high, not elementary, a spelling book and write the definitions in the back. Man. Some of y'all would love to do that. I hated that. Just write the definitions. Now, okay, what did you get out of that? Nothing. Nothing but hating the class. I don't even class. remember those words. No, so what was the purpose of that exercise? There and when I asked that, I, I didn't get an answer. answer. It was a great. Keep them she busy. Wanted, yes. And um, I kept fighting it until I finally got that taken off. But that, to me, that was just wasted time. Just so, bringing kids out of school. So me and you can like come together and work on like I don't know a protest <laughs> to the um <laughs> the headboard <laughs> of the the you know, the, like the, the board board. Board. Yeah, board. Are you going to Austin? Board head. Are you going to Austin? Or are you going to the head of Long Beach? Uh, Where are we going? Austin. We're going to Austin because, like, a lot of the things we have to do in school that not even Longview wants to do, it's like pointless. Like, yes, you have advocates that are down there fighting for you right now. I get blurbs on my phone all the time. We just got a bunch this week about things that would change, and that's the way to do it. Get those people to go fight for you because it's what? Oh, well. Get off my soapbox. <laughs> These tests y'all have to take, they make the test printers, the people that print them rich. That's what's happening. You know These what tests, I noticed? The paper test you take, those people are making money. I had to do the oral administration this year 
there were a lot of, I'm not going to discuss anything on the test, but there was a lot of wasted paper mm -hmm. on the test. Yeah. There were eight pages in a row that had one question on them. Yeah, like that. Like, that's printing, printing. You don't even need the space. Like, it just be like a simple it's question. like going, how much wasted money could we have on this? You know, I, you probably don't want to talk to me because I would ask why. I would say why. And I'm gonna give you answers. You know <laughs> I like I like people who ask why. And if I, they give me an answer, I, okay, I'll deal with it. I may not like it. I still might not do it. But at least I have an answer on what asking. <laughs> and and sometimes I have played the game and done it to keep the job. But then you're looking, you know, for well, another option. Sure, you know, yeah. of course, always a better fit. There's always things. Let me finish my spiel with this. There are always assignments you will have to do in school that you don't like, but you have to do them. There, there are all these ticks you have to cover. So there will be things you don't like, so you don't have to question Miss Angel on every assignment. But if you can get an answer as to why you're doing it, that just always helps. Even why are we doing this right do now? Thing. Why have I scheduled people to come in and visit with you all? So inspired. Dang, inspired. What? No. Know what you want to do, options. Boom. Real world. Y'all are about to be in the real world. I want you to know firsthand well, some options. <laughs> how many ha how many of y'all from the visitors that we've had have sparked like a little interest in something that you hadn't thought about before? Good. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our first speaker was Blake Hammack. Oh, you go. know him. And he had done that always. He had horses. Right. He used to be a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He had been a funeral director always. He used to do a big time. He did. Like he, that was his first job was uh, training horses. That's what's on my board over there. We talk, I don't know if I talked about this with you all. He said he made six figures after his first year of horses? mortuary school. Oh. My students... Some of them do not know what six figures means. Multiple figures. Six figures, okay, is one, two, three zeros, four, five, six. That's six figures. Hundred thousand plus would if someone says I made six figures, okay. Then we looked at he said he made six hundred dollars a week training horses. So we multiplied to see how much he was making a year which came out to $28,800. And so then he went to school for 15 months and came out and made six figures. So just getting training for 15 months, which is how long? A year and three months. A year and three months. He, he like multiplied what he was making by four. That was pretty good. He could probably continue training horses while he's going to school too. He got the horse. Keep that income. Yes, and now he, you know, owns two funeral homes in town here. Yeah. So. Um, so that is that's a viable. And that's a place if you like to talk to people, and make them feel comfortable because it's a very stressful place. That's a good job for you. If you like to, mm -hmm. to make, right. you know, you can do that. Down and, okay. Like, uh, just visit with them. Just mouth. Door greeter. He did. Because that's very stressful and very hard time. Some of the kids mentioned uh, that uh, Blake um, did was not like real, um, maybe emotional or you know. And we were talking about how that's you know probably something in that job, that profession. You've got to be able to. Did he come in a suit? Yes. I figured because that's what his job requires. Yes. You know, yes. I would like be so depressed. <laughs> I'd be crying all day, all night. But I'm glad. It takes all time. You said when? Hold on. I think it's May first, but hey. This is big news for our class. We're happy. Okay, so other questions for Miss Wendy: Education, graphic design, wedding planning, event. 
Okay. Um, if you could um, say substitute those star tests because we all hate them. We don't know why they're there. What would you do instead? That is a really good question because I thought about that every year. I thought about it. If I go and question it, I've got to bring something to the table to do. And unfortunately, right now, this is all they know to take is what you've studied and then, you know, quiz it and how much of it you retained of that as a grade. I don't know that answer. There's got to be something. I would think those tests y'all take, like, for the uh, Navy and the, what are those other like ones? Like ASFAB. ASFAB, 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 all of that. To me, that would be more valuable. That tells you what your likes are, what your interests are, you know, but it doesn't give you a number. And right now, all they know is a number. And I don't know how to substitute something in there for that 99% or that 85% or 72%. I don't, I don't know how to do that. EOCs are pretty close. They, they give you what you've learned, you know, in that, that thing. I don't know. That's, that's a good question. If you come up with something, you would make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Oh. Come up with a substitution of those tests. Oh, that's huh? uh, what has been like one of the like most like unique like things that you have to find? Like, uh, the one that did two weeks ago for Dr. Gasick. You know Dr. Gasick's very well you? No. Mm -hmm. His no. son got married. His son's name is Andre. His new daughter in law's name is Andrea. Oh. Wow. Wow. And they had it at Walker's Mill, but they so. went upscale. And it was it was there was a live band from Dallas. And um, the photographer was from Denver, Colorado, and it's real upscale and real different. But it was it was unique, very very unique. I think we all got home about two or three that morning. It was long, and um, but uh, crystal and glass and gold and shiny and pretty and different. So that that was that was interesting for weddings. That was really nice. Uh, I have designed a wedding in two weeks. And then I took my own son's wedding last January in a trailer to Denton, Texas, because that's where he lives, and we did his there for 300 people. So that was kind of different, too. <laughs> I took my cake maker with me and the taco lady and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did. We had taco bars. Good. All right. Your time. Um, <laughs> yeah. My other son has a drive-by wedding. That's what we call it. Good job. He is a drive-by <laughs> wedding. He, my brother-in-law is a pastor in Denton, same church where the other one got married, and he and Amber drove by there, Tom married him, and they went on to New Mexico to shoot guns. <laughs> That's what they like to do. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's funny. Different so, strokes for different. Different. It's all different. That's the thing you got to keep in mind looking for a job, because there's so many different options and so many. And like she said, you get in there, you don't like it, you know, try it for a reasonable amount of time. And then give them time to get your place filled if you're moving on. But you don't, you don't have to stay there if you don't like it. So, anybody got questions? All right. So back to your husband. Like, um, was he in a band or something? Several. Like, several. Not world famous, local. I, in the how did you enjoy Texas it? Like being with somebody who. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I had a shirt. I'm with the band. <laughs> that was the groupie on the side. All the side. <laughs> girlfriends were all the girls up there. We had our own little table. It was great. They they played in Louisiana. They played in Texas. That that was a job career that would be totally different than what he does now because it's so off the wall for him. Um, we had a band like in the old days that carried everything, and it was it was neat. They played a lot of gigs. So you enjoy like being with somebody? I love music. I'm a music nut, and there's no bad music in my view. Amen. There's all different kinds and it's needed for different things. I personally don't like slow and low. I like it loud and, and right. in my windows. But that's just me. <laughs> but he, he at the time was a rocker so they did that. They rattled the windows. And he still does that at 60 something years old. He likes to crank it up every once in a while. So yeah, that was fun. Miss Wendy's a people person. She doesn't meet a stranger so she could go anywhere and fit in and have fun. That, that's you know. Easy. Dang, um, that's crazy. The old rock band, Journey Eagles, see how it's Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And he played keyboard mostly because the other guy played guitar, but he, he would get on the guitar and yell and sing. Yeah. Hey, crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. 
uh, one of his favorites is Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan. If you don't know who Stevie Ray, Stevie Ray Vaughan is, you must Google him and you must know him because you can't graduate without that fact. <laughs> Best guitarist. That the world. will be on Miss Wendy's quiz. That will be on my quiz. What do you know about him? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan is your homework for Miss Wendy. Oh, cool. So we have about five minutes. Does anyone else have a question or? Uh, Miss Wendy, I want you to be thinking while they're seeing if they have any other questions about what has been your favorite, say, position you've been in maybe for about three years. What was your favorite position ever? And why? I may not have an answer. I'm going to tell them. I want you to tell us. <laughs> Well, if you had to pick one to go to, go back to, what would it be? I don't know if I would go back and do it again, but one of my most favorite times in my life was in the classroom because I got to share knowledge with kids oh, and I got to one. see the lights go on. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> that was very fulfilling. And no, I didn't make a lot of money. You can, you can Google the salaries of Texas teachers. Sucks, really. But that was that was probably the best. Cause that's, that was a time when I changed careers. Had little kids at home. I just loved it. But I did incorporate my art. I brought art in. You can just reading class or English or writing or whatever. We do a lot of art stuff too. So, so like, I have a question. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get your number so we can like sure. have contact? Yeah, I have a Facebook page, Carlton Artisans. Oh, see, me and Facebook don't get along, you know, like. Oh, yeah, I can't that's I, like. I forgot I had a Facebook. Yeah, that's like, like, there that's like using a, that, a flip phone. <laughs> nah, like, a lot of people but I know still be on free. Facebook. I just don't be on my phone, so. Yeah. I'd rather have somebody's number. You can, um. But you can private message her on through Facebook. Uh -huh. All right, good. What's your Facebook? Good. The Harleton Artisan. H a r l e t o n h a r t i s a n. You can get it from me if you want. All right, good. So we're gonna try to get. I can just see Eddie is gonna be like on the new rap, uh -huh. <laughs> playing he, in the background. Uh, it's interesting. You, you kind of got off on that. When he started, he was in high school. Started playing in garages and places, you know, because that was taboo of music and we all wanted to be able to play it and all that kind of stuff. And his mom and dad were being in a church. So whenever this group would play somewhere, they would have flyers that would advertise the big thing happening at the Civic Center or the big Battle of the Bands or whatever. And he wouldn't let him them put his name on there. So it would be whatever the name of the band is, plus Howlin' Wolf or some name that he made up. So there's all these flyers with some weird name on there because he couldn't Kevin. Let his so, parents know that he was doing these evil things on the weekends. Right. <laughs> Crazy. All right, what do we say to Miss Wendy? Gracias. Thank you.